This is a video to explain how to install an external Express LRS receiver onto a Crazy B ELRS all-in-one board where the internal receiver has blown. So I want to install an external one. So first of all, we want to check which UART is free. So I'll plug this all-in-one into Betaflight, Betaflight, wherever we want to say it. Connect and ports, and as you can see, UART2 is taken up by the internal VTX, UART1 is free, so we're going to use UART1, I'm going to show you where that is, and how to connect your receiver. So first of all, I want to save a backup of the Express LRS Audubon Crazy B board, so I plugged it into Betaflight again. And connect. So you can do this two ways. You can either go into the presets tab, save backup, and I've I've made a folder already. Happy model ELRS Open VTX four hundred. That's my board, and save in there. Or. can go into CLI if you type dump DUMP it'll dump all your configuration including the stock generic what's first on the board when you first do a flash but if you want all the differences made i.e. the tune that you've done and all the other settings you can type diff all enter and you can copy that to clipboard, copy it to a notepad and save that into a file onto your computer. Do that before you do any changes to your quadcopter. So we've already ascertained that we can use UART1 on the flight controller for the ELRS external receiver. So I'll show you where they are. Flip the board over, the side where the motors are connected. And as you can see, I'm going to lie this flat. Right. Here's the TX1 pad. There. There's the RX1 pad there. That's camera in, so you skip that one. And this one here is 5 volts. And here you have the ground. And that is camera out. So the camera in and the camera out is if you was uh, installing an external VTX but for now we're going to use that one that one that one and that one for the receiver TX1 on the flight controller goes to RX1 on the receiver RX1 on the flight controller goes to TX1 on the receiver 5 volts to 5 volts ground to ground so there's the um, pads tinned up. It's not the prettiest in the world, but this is quite challenging because those pads are absolutely tiny. And as you can see, they're all nestled in between different components and plastic bits. So if you're not quite conversant, I'd say, at soldering, do not attempt this. And certainly don't attempt it unless you absolutely have to uh, install an external receiver onto one of these boards because this is proper fiddly as you can see that one there on the left is really close to some of the components you can also check your work with a 5 or 10x loop to sit to check your solder joints shout out to Alan Ciotti for recommending one of these they're absolute godsend okay next we're going to solder on the wires well, these are the wires soldered up to my Happy Model Express LRS EP1 receiver. We've got ground, 5 volt, TX, which goes to the RX on the flight controller, RX, which goes to the TX on the flight controller. Now here, again, check your work with a 5X or 10X loop. But here, next to the ground pad, there's another pad here, which I bridged to the first time I tried. This is why you have to double check your work. It's very, very fiddly and small. I'll drop the temperature down 
to tin my wires either side to about 400 degrees Celsius. And when I'd done the pads, I'd put it back up to 430, 440 centigrade uh, just to get the job done quickly. But this is your own personal preference. So here's the receiver soldered up to the all-in-one board. As you can see, throughout every stage, I've taped the components to my workstation uh, just to stop them moving, but also to uh, protect some of them from uh, some of the components from solder splatter. As you can see there, we go in there. It's all soldered up. Not pretty, but it's the best I can do in my big sausage fingers. On the other side. I've reconnected the VTX antenna. Um, when I first got the board, I put this piece of insulation tape here. So when, depending on your build, if you have to rotate the antenna, the metal head of the antenna is not impeding on any of the surrounding electronics and it won't short anything. So that's a little tip there. Just put a bit of insulation tape by the connector of the VTX antenna. Now we're going to set it up in beta flight. Now we're going to plug the quadcopter into beta flight and connect. And under the ports tab, we're going to go to UART1 and select Serial RX, save and reboot. Now we're going to go into the receiver tab. As you can see, it's set up for SPI based receiver at the moment. So we're going to go down to serial via UART. And then select Crossfire. This last. was Spectrum when it first comes up. Last. Crossfire. CRSF for Crossfire. And save and reboot. And connect and in the receiver now I'll move the sticks my radio up and down for throttle you can see the inputs are working correctly so the receiver is talking to the flight controller right that's all done so if you refer to my previous video how to flash in happy model external Express OLRS receiver uh, with a modified USB cable. I'll leave a link in the description there on how to do that. That saves you frying your board and powering it up while you're binding your receiver or flashing it. Um, I'll also leave a link uh, in the description for um, CRT FPV, um, Aaron Ciotti's channel, who, who has given me countless bits of information and knowledge over the years thank you my man um check his channel out definitely let's get this baby fired up now and there it is all built up with the express lrs receiver installed you could probably think of a better way out to mount your antenna but it's got it hanging out the back for now we could probably attach it to the frame um i wouldn't recommend this because as i say it's fiddly uh, it's quite difficult and it's a bit janky to be honest um, best case scenario just buy another all-in-one board but if you're skint can't be bothered or got a spare ep1 ep2 receiver floating around here's how to install one all right let's get this baby up and running now here's my first test and as you're about to see, it's flying okay. I got an RSSI critical warning before I took off, but that corrected itself as soon as I flew away from myself. So maybe I was too close. And uh, more testing is needed. As you can see at the moment, it's all working fine. The recommendation is you normally have to disable the internal RX, but as it had blown anyway, there's nothing really to disable so I left it received uh, connected the external receiver and it seems to be fine at the moment but as I said more testing needed ok 
Okay, I hope this video helps someone. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.